been dreaming. It's now that I woke, everything that I see, what it seems, man. I guess I've been dreaming. Peace and love to all the guys and galaxies and the high vibrating species on the planet. What it is, what it do, good people. Come on in. What's happening? What's busting out there, man? What's happening? What's happening? Peace, peace, peace. Academates, come on in, man. Y'all come on in. Peace and love to you. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for joining me yet again uh, on another extravaganza in the realm of the monsters. And we got literary SCPs, y'all. Literary SCPs. Like, what? Obviously, they they're like uh, they like scholars in philosophy or something. Maybe I don't know, but I hope everybody good, man. Cause we up in here, uh, yeah, it's Liddy in the city. You already know how we get it, um, and yeah, I, I appreciate y'all joining me yet again. You know what I'm saying? That's from the heart. I really do appreciate you joining me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So salute to everybody yet again. Um, shout out all. You know, come on in and get your ace in the back. Ace in the back. Shut your face. We don't want to hit. We don't want to hit. Nothing that you got to say. You feel me? Because y'all been tweaking. Y'all say, man, did you see what they did with my pewter, man? Did you see that? They jumped to my, I'm still tweaking on the jump, the jump 17 minutes. And then, then the, the delay on trying to get the vids out now. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all really trying me. Y'all trying me, man. I ain't trying my pimping. Like, why? Let me alone. Just let me alone. Let me alone. I don't want to have to do it to you. Let me alone. You feel me? Cause there's no days off. We gonna stay. We gonna stay on you. Pressure. Pressure. You know what I'm saying? Big Mama Energy, Mama Bear. You feel me? Y'all already know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? The universe has sent us in here to do the job. So we gonna get the job done. Stepping on you. You feel me? So it, get in the back and shut your face. Get stepped on. You know what I'm saying? We're we going to check out the literary SCPs, uh, YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't want no trouble. I don't want no trouble. No problems. We're going to call it how we see it. No problems, though. We're just going to call it how we see it. All right? You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that. We just, you know. Um, if people would be a lot more forthcoming with the information, we, we wouldn't have to do it like this. Right, that's, that's, that's all I'm saying. So, um, yeah. Academies, we're going to go and get this thing on the way. I hope y'all got what you need. You know what I'm saying? Because I do. And without further ado, if you're new, you know what I'm saying? Don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe button. Academies, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all do the same. Of course, you know who we're tangling with. Uh, so I could use a little hand with the algorithm to get us up in that thing. So, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's smash that like button. Let's, uh, let's, let's share the knowledge, the information, the new perspective. Um, let's let's hit that subscribe button and the bell. You know what I'm saying, so you can be notified whenever we drop. Um, typically, we're at seven. It's Academy Seven, so we like to drop at seven. You know what I'm saying, right before dinner time, or right after dinner time, or right at dinner time, or however your dinner time is. We like to do it at the seven. Although we know it ain't the same around the, around the globe. All right, but that's the way we like to do it. But here lately, you know what I'm saying, they trying to you know. Man, you feel me? So, uh, yeah. Let's get this thing busting, shall we? Literary Let, SCPs. Oh, okay, we good. Oh, we came in there. One of the things that separates humans from other animals is the written word. Our capability to pass on experiences. Right. Hey, boy. I caught that. He said, "What? Well, one of the things that separates humans from other animals <laughs> man that listen bro that that right that that part alone is just it goes so deep but we gonna <laughs> i digress because we, we just getting started stories <laughs> knowledge through writing books have been written about every subject known to man i'm sure science to history to ghost stories and fantastical adventures but you won't release them all. The SCP universe itself is an incredible piece of collaborative literature. But yeah. inside of it, there are also a handful of SCPs 
that are specifically linked to books in some way. Let's, let's get it. Some of the SCPs we'll be looking at are just weird books themselves, while others interact with normal books in strange ways. Which means, hey, so, so what, we, we, we gonna, please tell me we gonna talk about Death Note. Can we talk about Death Note? Let's see, y'all. I won't be looking at some of the most well-known book SCPs, as they've been discussed in previous videos, such as SCP-140 and SCP-1425. SCP-1025 is a hardcover book containing about 1,500 pages, with the title, The Encyclopedia of Common Diseases. Readers of the book begin to exhibit symptoms of any disease that they read about, manifesting 10, within a few hours eight. or so. A D-class reading about the common cold begins to cough a couple hours later, complaining about feeling achy. Another that read about chicken pox began oh, so to scratch... This, 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 is a ma this is a magic book. This is a book of spells. So it's like a grimoire. ...in multiple places, despite already having contracted chicken pox at an early age. More seriously... They had a few D class read a section about lung cancer. The first began coughing significantly oh, and wheezing, fuck. but when terminated okay. and sent for an autopsy, doctors found no signs of tumors. They decided to wait for a longer period with the second subject, and after seven days, the subject was coughing and then wheezing far beyond what would be normal, but their autopsy also revealed no tumors. The third D-class exhibited similar symptoms after seven days, but they decided to perform a live vivisection instead to find tumors. Still, none were found, but the Foundation continued testing with a couple dozen more D-class, vivisecting them in search of signs of infection. The 27th D-class is told to read the entry about appendicitis, despite the subject having their appendix removed when they were 16. After 52 hours, subject complained of significant abdominal discomfort, and a vivisection found no appendix in the subject's body. But research staff agreed that the area where the appendix normally would be looked a few shades more red than normal. The 28th D-Class was formerly one of the research staff working on 1025, and had developed a persistent cough despite never reading the book. He was placed in observation for a week, and on the seventh day, the notes record that he appeared slightly taller than the previous day. The remaining research staff were planning to vivisect him when he managed to escape observation. The researchers note that he could be infected with any number of anomalous diseases now. The real effect of SCP-1025 is revealed at this point, showing that the book doesn't infect any reader with a disease but actually infects anyone around the reader with severe hypochondria by proxy. In other words, those around the reader begin to drastically panic over the slightest signs of disease or infection. This is what led to a large number of vivisections that resulted in nothing, and a researcher that developed a right. cough was immediately quarantined and was going to be vivisected as well. In the end, the O5s locked it in a box and warned everyone to try not to worry about it. SCP-152 is a very large hardbound book with paper resembling vellum, with text that alters to appear in whatever language the reader is most comfortable with. New text cannot be added to the book as it repels any foreign materials. This also That's prevents the book eight. from decaying, so it's unknown how old the book is. The contents of the book consist of a series of apocalyptic events throughout history that invariably resulted in the extinction of humanity. They are arranged in chronological order, starting with the spontaneous failure of the sun in 6000 BC, leading up to near present day. Many of these scenarios are the result of different anomalies, while a few are from more... Here we go again with another pointer. They're telling you, and I'm just I'm just here to point it out. The sun, baby, <laughs> the crown of the sun. 
is going down. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm just here to point it out. So here's another one. And they talking about these are prophecies in a book that can't be destroyed and it won't decay. So it, it, there's no telling how long it's been around. That's what they're saying. There's no telling how long this junk been around, right? And it's one of the first prophecies that he throws out there is from 6,000 up until this point. Hmm. That's ironic because from what I understand, so certain species on the planet that ain't really been around that long, around possibly or maybe around about 6,000 years that they've actually been on the planet and up until present time and now we got the sun cranking out there. Okay. Or so I'm just letting you know. They're telling you something. Nuclear war. You something. Pay attention. Epidemic. Class. Academy. As far as the foundation can tell, the details leading up to these scenarios are accurate. With only a few key differences in decisions made between our reality and and the book's alternate reality. The Foundation is using it to gain some insight into what, what certain anomalies could do if left in the wild, and to reinforce the importance of the Foundation What's that? for researchers that aren't quite sure. An 05 notes that many of the recent entries in the book detail scenarios in which the Foundation screws up and ends up killing everyone. Some testing yeah, my found that when now. the book updates that. itself with new information, it's actually disappearing for exactly one second before reappearing. It begs the question of who or what is up to I don't like that one. Rather than just one book, SCP-1986 contains... I mean, that, that book bigger than a mother. I just noticed that. Hold up, run her back. Run her back a quick second. I just like I'm looking at I'm looking in the background, but I'm not really looking at what he got going on. This man is a mighty big book y'all got here, brother. Where y'all got this at? Hmm? Where y'all got this at? I mean, we should know by now. You know, what I'm saying that giants are a thing. You know, what I'm saying we should know by now. So I'm not gonna say that this is just. You feel Rather me? than just one um, book, no, SCP-1986 not, not contains uh, a countless amount of books, yeah, as it's yeah, a two-meter-wide yeah, tunnel yeah, yeah, of unknown yeah, depth completely lined with them. The Foundation's best guess for a depth is at least 274,000 kilometers, but it's certainly possible that the tunnel is, in fact, infinitely deep. The books often resemble real known works, but with changes to their style, characters, plot, and subject matter. Books range from being somewhat unusual to completely nonsensical, encompassing every known language. There are a number of examples listed, including an unknown collection of short stories by Edgar Allan Poe named The Worm of Midnight, in which all the stories concern shellfish. A book written in Braille titled A Lap Full of Severed Tongues about the American suffragette movement featuring an unknown variation on scratch and sniff. A book containing part of President Woodrow Wilson's personal diary detailing the political battle for Thailand's statehood, his thoughts on a constitutional amendment to grant citizenship to the afflicted, and his personal doubts about being named Presbyter of the Imperial States of America. A cookbook on the topic of cooking the English language, detailing how to properly prepare and cook words and phrases in a wide variety of meals, including how to make crispy prepositions, suffixes as a fun treat for children, and a chapter devoted to gourmet words, such as inhospitable and tertiary. Also not a okay, book that, is SCP-826, a pair of pewter bookends in the shape of dragon heads. When a book is placed between the bookends by an individual and the person leaves the room, 826 will instantaneously change the interior of the room into the setting of the contained book, typically drastically enlarging and altering the interior space. 
I'm dope. The book that initiated the process and 826 will relocate to somewhere inside of the setting where one might find books, such as a library or study. To reverse the process, an individual has to find the book, remove it from the bookends, and carry it back outside of the room. In addition to the setting change, anyone entering the changed room will be placed at a random point in time in the book's plot, ranging from the beginning to near the end. Before you start to think that this would be an incredible thing to have for yourself, if an individual does not manage to find the book and reverse the process before the book's plot has finished, the plot will reset, with the person losing all of their memories and now incorporated as a background character in the story. Maybe you still want it, though. Oh, hell no. No, no, cause hey, that's like that uh that the the game with the with the with the with the chess pieces. No. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good cuz I ain't trying to be, you know what I'm saying? I got my own story that I'm I'm having to re-piece together right now. I'm not trying to be a part of anybody else's his story or anybody else's story period. You know what I'm saying? I I'm trying to get mine back together cuz some cuz some memory erasing things then took place on this planet. So it's like I, I yet again we I'm seeing a lot of things that they're just throwing out there and it's like bits and pieces of it, but if you, you know what I'm saying, generally know what or have a, a you know what I'm saying, did some type of study on some of the things that's really taking place on this planet, then some of these words trick and how the way they're just like just dissecting it, but it's throwing man, I'm just you just got to catch. It. I mean I guess you got to have an eye for it. You got to have an eye for it, I say. You got to have an eye for it. Cuz I'm just like, man, there's no way that they're saying all this and nobody's catching this. There's no way. But that's what I'm here for. The foundation I'm has done a thing. number of I'm experiments here. with you know 6 mm. utilizing published Let me get books, that. amateur short stories, uh, and even You know what I'm saying? Go get it. Randy Moss Using Little House pulled that thing Perry, down. You know what I'm talking about? Up with the main character this, from the this, book. This is, yeah. Accompanies Let's him to his cabin and eats dinner with the family before finding the book and leaving. The copy of the book used contained an additional paragraph in the middle of the story discussing the agent. A DVD copy of The Shining was tested, in which an agent walked through the hotel, enters the hotel manager's office, finds the DVD, and leaves, interacting with none of the characters. With a copy of A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin, a D-Class is sent in and told to disembowel the first human they see which happened to be Lord Eddard Stark. The D-Class assured researchers afterwards that they stabbed him until he was definitely not going to live, but the book only added a few paragraphs about a very unintelligent assassin who made an attempt on Eddard Stark's life. It seems that 826 well, will preserve the core narrative of the story regardless of interference. Speaking of <laughs> interfering with stories, SCP-423 is an entity that it Wow. Well, that only means that that was supposed to happen. The narrative, narrative of that story that was like... The entity was first discovered I mean, in a not copy stage, of Tom but Sawyer. Found by it an was agent during fixed. a routine search in a so used bookstore. No matter what you try to do, the alternate the book was alternate otherwise is, normal, is going to except run for the court. inclusion of a new character yes. in the story named Fred. When the book was left next to a copy of Moby Dick, it was discovered that this entity, who typically goes by the name Fred or some version of it, can jump from story to story. Well, Fred that. inserts himself as a minor character, usually appearing as an average middle aged male but depending on the narrative can appear as younger or older or even as a non-human. Fred's presence is never noted as being unusual mm. by any other character. If another book is placed near the one that Fred is currently in, it takes up to three minutes for him to move from one to the other. The text on all the pages moves to accommodate the new text for Fred, and sometimes the size of the text will grow smaller or larger to maintain the page count. Fred can be communicated with if he is coaxed into moving into a journal, 
with his responses appearing beneath questions, and he's been mostly cooperative since containment. He has requested for access to more narratives, preferably fictional ones with a large number of background characters. Of course, researchers have tried to kill Fred using narrative text, but so far they've been unsuccessful, as Fred displays a strong grasp of narrative principles and is able to easily avoid danger to himself. Researchers must be careful not to leave written notes around Fred's containment, as he occasionally jumps in to add addenda as guest researcher Fred. Finally, we have SCP-1230, a green, unlabeled, hardcover book with no title, and the only text in the book is on the first page, reading, A Hero is Born. When this text is read by an individual <laughs> and they go to sleep, they will dream of a fantasy world where they are the protagonist of a troubled land. The dreamer is completely lucid during this dream, and the results vary depending on the imagination of the reader, especially effective with those interested in adventure fantasies. In reality, the dreamer stays asleep a normal period of time, but in their mind, the length of this vivid dream can vary quite a bit. Additionally, upon awaking, the dreamer remembers every aspect of their dream in detail. In every dream induced by 1230, there is a bearded man in a green cloak who calls himself the bookkeeper, claiming to be the personification of SCP-1230. The bookkeeper is very amicable and helpful, and states that he enjoys creating these fantasy dreams, shaping them so that the dreamer gains the most enjoyment out of them. It typically expresses sorrow when the dream finally ends, telling the individual to please visit again soon. In one test, a D-Class is told to enter the dream and immediately try to find a way to kill themselves. They awoke less than a minute after falling asleep, claiming that they had been at the summit of an active volcano on a quest for Caladius, the Blessed Blade. He had leapt into the volcano, felt an intense heat, and woke up. He requested permission to give it another go, but the request was denied. Another D-Class was instructed to simply harm himself in the dream without killing himself, and he later reported that he could feel a numbed sort of pain from the injuries, but never anything unbearable. The bookkeeper had appeared and asked why he was harming himself, but thanked him for not immediately killing himself like that other rude fellow. This is obviously an item that could appeal to a large number of people, especially those obsessed with fantasy stories and games. A particular researcher requested access to SCP-1230, which was granted due to his high level of clearance. Other staff members recall his visible excitement due to him being an avid fan of tabletop and role-playing games, and he soon fell asleep. Staff grew alarmed after 15 hours had passed without the researcher waking up, and his vitals were monitored from that point. He finally began to stir after 24 hours appearing deeply confused and asking where he was. Shortly after, he seemed to regain his memory and excused himself to the restroom. After 15 minutes, a nurse entered the restroom and discovered that the researcher had hanged himself. A note scribbled on the wall reading, I can't go back to this. 1230 was wet with ink, repeating the same message on every page. I'm so sorry. I never intended for this to happen. I just wanted to make people happy. The book remained in this state for three weeks before another doctor placed a sticky note inside of it saying that he'd like to talk to the bookkeeper if it's alright. The book cleared, and the doctor was able to enter a dream to talk to the bookkeeper. In the middle of a dark void, with the bookkeeper sobbing while sitting in a puddle, the doctor asked him what happened. The bookkeeper explains that the researcher had such a vivid and active imagination, and he had yearned for so long to live a life like this. He had conquered foul beasts and rescued princesses, built kingdoms and raised a family, and never wanted to leave. The bookkeeper realized that he preferred the dream to his real life, and when confronted, the researcher said that if he was ever forced to leave, he would immediately kill himself. The bookkeeper therefore tried to keep him happy as long as he could, 
but eventually he failed to maintain things after 200 years. In the end, as sweet as dreams may be, eventually we all have to wake up. Literature and writing have been an incredible part of the development of modern humanity, from the Code of Hammurabi to the SCP Wiki. Some good, some bad, some insightful, some preachy, some emotional, some philosophical. The SCPs see, I discussed what, what, here I'm, don't really have an incredible you know amount yeah, in common, let me, let me, but let me, yeah. I hope they've at least kept you interested. I knew he was going to say that. I knew that was what was should. going on. Yeah, that's cool. Um, that that's the video right there, though. You know what I'm talking about. I hope y'all like that junk because I did. I found it very interest interesting. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I was definitely gonna say that about bro right there. You know what I mean? He was like, he came back to this world like, man, fuck this, bro. I can't. Uh, uh-uh. uh, I can't do it, folk. I'm out. Nah. <laughs> no, I'm over there doing the damn thing. You know what I'm talking about? I I am conquering over there, bro. I am everything that I could ever imagine, ever dreamt, ever everything. And I come back here like, man, what the f- is this? But on another note, you know what I'm saying? On the, on the esoteric side of the things, the so-called dream world is actually the real world. This is really the dream, the uh, simulation, the whatever you want to call it. Truman, whatever, whatever you want to call it, it's it's that, and it's just waiting on you to wake up. Again, it's not for everybody. That's that stipulation. I mean, waking up is for everyone. Uh, ascension, excuse me, is allotted to everyone. Soul and no soul, you you still have the opportunity to ascend. To, you know what I'm saying at least get out of the 3D and up to the 4D it's got to be better than the 3 right because in the 4 that's the mental plane and in the mental plane you can pretty much will it into existence um, again here there are what they like to they, they like to call it the uh, you're here having a, a a human experience so to speak so that's what he was going through. You know what I'm saying? He went over there and he had an experience that was so real and to him. He knew that that was 100 and he'd rather be there than over here where he knew things were not the way it was supposed to be. And he said, I'm checking out if I got to go. If I got to go back over there, bro, I'm, I'm checking out and coming right back over here. Which if he probably wouldn't be going there, but. Uh, because that 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 all depends on that that his vibration and when him doing that he was vibing very low so to take himself out yes that definitely was vibing low his reasons i get his reasons but i mean to do that to yourself that's that's yeah you're, you're low you're low in vibration um so i purgatory uh second dimension maybe first dimension you know what i'm saying like until you figure it figure it out guy my guy because yeah but i get it i get it because you go over there i mean after they after after they just you know what i'm saying he gave us a, a laundry list of of your accomplishments bro and I, I can't be mad at that can't be mad at that you know what i'm saying um it's crazy that it, it hit him but see that's that's the mind that's how powerful the mind is because he was in a so quote unquote dream state and manifested everything that he wanted. And over here, I obviously, you know what I'm saying? He couldn't manifest everything the way he wanted it to be like that, that perfect world that he was in. You know what I mean? And that's for some of us, you know what I'm saying? We get to go back to that. You just got to control yourself and control your thoughts. And that's a part of controlling your emotions. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, cause if I was him, I really would have just took my ass back to sleep. <laughs> you feel me? Like, hey, I, hey, give give me a week. You know what I'm saying? Like, give me something and let me go under, bro. I'm from, let me be here for a while. You know what I mean? Let me let me really really get my get my shit off in here. You know what I'm saying? And then I come back and do some work, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then I, you, you feel me? It's it's ways that it's ways around it, but it's I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I get it. It's, that was deep, y'all. That was that was real deep. You know what I'm saying? Literary, literary SCPs. Now, of course, they didn't. I mean, now nah, I mean they didn't talk about the Death Note, but say it's some some stuff in there is kind of Death Noteish. If 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 you get my meaning, you know what I'm saying? Uh, if if y'all if, if you don't know anything about Death Note, go check it out. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, yeah. So. Academy, y'all keep your head on that swivel, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I normally say pick up a book, but <laughs> I'd, I'd say be careful what you're reading. If it looks like it's ancient, uh, yeah, take precaution. I ain't going to say don't read it because that we do need the intel. But take precaution with the books that you get in your hands on. You know what I'm saying? Keep yourself spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally protected out there. You feel me? Don't let the world drive you crazy. You feel me? Um, tell Shadow Log, you know what I'm saying, to... Keep her, keep her pushing. You feel me? If they getting in your business, anybody trying to bring you down to a lower vibration, they're you know saying make sure you step on their neck. You feel me? When you come down there, because it ain't. I'm, tell, I'm telling you, for the stuff that's going on right now, high vibration.